Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Gallegos. I'm here with Robin Cedarholm of Paradox Entertainment. He's a producer, or Paradox Interactive, a producer over at Paradox, and we're checking out Knights of Pen and Paper. Yes. Uh, so, on the high level, what am I seeing right now? Uh, right now you're seeing Knights of Pen and Paper and what we call the Plus One Edition. Uh, Knights of Pen and Paper was released by Behold Studios uh, in October last year for mobile platforms. Right. But now we've partnered up with them to launch the game on uh, PC, Mac, and Linux as well. And so, so I guess, uh, what's new to the PC version? Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff. Um, like, first of all, we have to focus, of course, on just like getting it ready for the platforms and everything. Sure. Uh, but we're adding like a bunch of features uh, to add more gameplay options for the players, like more content to explore, more challenges, etc. We've tried to sort of listen on the feedback. Uh, from the players of the already existing game to sort of see what we should, we should do with it. So what is, I mean, to even rewind it a little bit, like what is Knights of Pen and Paper? Like what do I do? Uh, well, uh, the developers like to call it a uh, meta RPG, uh, which describes it pretty well, because you're essentially uh, playing a group of people playing a pen and paper role-playing game. Okay. So it's like a game within a game kind of thing. Uh, I can... Yeah, like, let's, let's, let's go ahead and jump into a game. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I see we have the table here that looks obviously if you've ever played D and D, you have a guy that looks like a, a DM. Yeah. And then there's seats for players. Yeah, exactly. So you pretty much uh, start off in in the basement here, and you start off by adding uh, people to your party. So okay. first you have to select uh, like your friends, like the people you want to play with, and uh, these are a bunch of different guys, like the pizza guy, the jock, the Woofy, <laughs> little brother. Uh, and all of these people bring a passive trait with them. Uh, okay, in this okay. case, the little brother is unquiet, uh, so he gets a plus two initiative since he's like yeah, he's rambunctious, very he's, impatient, he's annoying little yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and then you select a class uh, that you feel is appropriate, maybe for the person. Uh, so there's a bunch of different, uh, like standard RPG, yeah, yeah, traditional yeah, exactly. classes. Yeah, uh, and then I ma and then obviously each class has uh, a powers various powers that they can use. Exactly. So uh, in this case, I'm gonna go with the mage, and then I have like a fireball, uh, the deep freeze, and sort of stuns enemies. Right. Uh, passive that increases his magic power and a meteor oh, strike. Of course. Yeah. Meteor. So uh, these are pretty much the four skills that every class has, and you uh, like you progress them in a straight line pretty sure. much throughout the game. Uh, so I'm gonna add this one and create another. Yeah, as you see, he's very impatient. Uh, and then I'm just gonna go for uh, these are the developers as well. They're in the game. And oh really? <laughs> like that. I'm gonna go with Grandma here. She's pretty good. Right. So uh, then, when you have the first two characters set up, uh, you can start the game. And then there's like always a bunch of dialogue between the players and the dungeon master. Uh, they're sometimes in character. Sometimes they sort of go off the off the uh, game so to speak uh, and then as you see like they start imagining the world around them but you're, you're constantly traveling throughout the pen and paper world right so uh, when the dm the is kind of uh, describing the environments to you it's creating those yeah uh, those sort of images in the background yeah, exactly so the, you start off in a basic dungeon you're you're trapped in some kind of prison you have to get out you have no idea why but it doesn't really matter uh, so all right first quest we have to kill two guards Nothing fancy, uh, but since you're you're not only playing the the players, you're like you're actually in control of the dungeon master as well, so you get to set up the fights yourself to sort of select the the kind of challenge you think your group can handle. So like I can add like seven guards if I want to. I uh, see, and so that is going to award more experience. Exactly, like you get a group bonus for experience, you get a bunch more gold and all that stuff. So and right. sometimes it might be faster. Like in this case, I just have to kill the two guards, but. Uh, it goes faster to take on the, both of them if I can, like immediately, sure. instead of taking one of them at a time. Uh, <laughs> then combat is pretty straightforward. Uh, you do initiative roll. You see the yellow numbers here beneath is my initiative, and then you have the initiative. Okay, the so initiative. they're gonna. And then it's you're turn gonna based. go first before yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Now I don't have any abilities unlocked yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some of that stuff uh, in a minute, but uh, pretty much just have to kill these off. You have a bunch of other options as well, like drink consumables, take a defensive stance to sort of lower your threat level. Is the uh, in chicken case symbol, is that like a runaway? Yeah, chicken out. Uh, yeah. If you've sort of taken water over your head, you can always chicken out and sort of just run from the battle. Uh, in case you overestimate your abilities, that's a good thing. There we go. There you see, I get a little group bonus there for two, two enemies. Okay, and that group bonus goes up based on the amount of enemies exactly. you're fighting. Yeah. 
And so the money you're earning too is that I imagine that you you outfitting your characters with items and stuff. Yes, That's exactly. Uh, I'm gonna get out of this dungeon now. Just go to the default village. Actually, name of the first village. It's visit. called Default Village. Yeah, there's yeah. A, like a tons of humor. I like was gonna say that's one thing I remember from the uh, the mobile version is that it's they don't take it. It's intentionally unserious. Yeah, the game doesn't take itself very seriously and constantly makes jokes about itself and like there's a tons of references to different stuff in the game as well. So, uh, so now I'm at the first actual location. So this is the context menu where I have all the options available to me here. Uh, I can do a bunch of battle, just like random, pick out some monsters to fight. Uh, I can go travel around the world. I can sleep at the inn. You can sleep at any location, but it's safer to, to sleep in villages and cities. And then you can create different quests. Gonna show you that in a minute. And here's the like the item shop, like you said. There's a tons of different items you can buy. There's also a real world shop. I can show you that real quickly. You can go back to out to the basement again, like sort of break the immersion of the fancy world, and then right. you can buy like a bunch of snacks or drinks. Gives you a temporary boost. Uh, otherwise, you can like refurnish. The but they're room. like actual like snacks and drinks that like the uh, people would eat when they're actually doing the nerding out and yeah. playing, a, playing yeah. a game of Dungeons exactly. and Dragons. And you can change the dungeon master. Uh, you can put a bunch of stuff in here, change the door, everything. Like. And it's cool because the aesthetic things that you're adding to your dungeon aren't just aesthetic. They actually have like tangible benefits. Yeah, like exactly. Yet. Like the bare fur carpet gives me a plus ten health. Both the items here in the real world room and the gold is sort of global, so you can have like three save games going uh, with three different groups, but they share the same gold and the same uh, real world items. So which is pretty cool and makes it easier if you want to restart a game or everything, you might have more benefits, makes the early game go faster. So ultimately, what is the ultimate goal in Knights of Pen and Paper? The ultimate goal is to save the pen and paper world, of course, from an evil wizard that's trying to sort of break out uh, from the fancy world and into the real world. Uh, and like, there's of course a bunch of people in the pen and paper world that would suffer from like all the stuff he's doing. Like, so it's pretty pretty standard so story for an RPG, pretty much. Um, so at this point, uh, when can people play Knights of Pen and Paper? Uh, well, the mobile game is already sure, out, sure, but that's sure. the I old guess on version. The PC, but you know, yeah, the, the, plus the plus one, one edition will be out sometime this summer. Uh, so uh, for all the platforms, is uh, there a, is there, you know, an aimed for kind of price that people? Uh, we haven't really set the price yet. Uh, we have to sort of look at how we're going to handle that, like both on the mobile platforms and uh, the desktop versions as well, and uh, sort of see how we how we want to do that. But the price won't be high. I can tell you that much. Okay. Uh, can show you a few yeah, of the yeah, other let's, features let's, here. Let's yeah. check out the, the how you create a quest. Yeah, exactly. And this is once again sort of the dungeon master uh, part of the game. Like you can select pretty much what kind of quest you want to do. Like if I want to slay something and then I can sort of select the different things available to slay or I can do a rescue mission or I can collect a bunch of stuff or escort someone. Uh, and this is pretty much uh, limited uh, depending on the location you're at. So sure. every location has a set of uh, quests available to you. Once you like create a quest and initiate it, there's gonna be like a scripted like the dungeon master starts telling the story. Right, about and it'll area. it'll change the background of yeah, the area yeah. you're in. Exactly. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, I can pretty much I can show you the uh, a lot of the existing customers are gonna like a few of the things uh, we've done with this version. Uh, we have now. Previously, you would have to, when you did travel, it would be kind of like slow. You would have to take one location at a time. Right, We'd do right. a dice roll to check for random encounters, and uh, then you would end up in the next location. Then you would have to go back out on the world map again. So now we just added a uh, quick travel system. Where you select the final destination, then it just like automatically goes through the steps to get so there. So this is an example of one of those times where it's like listening to customer yes. feedback. And, like This is not a major feature, but I think it's going to make... No, it's a nice like, usability thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, a lot of the existing players are going to notice some new things here. Uh, I'm going to show you that with uh, another group party, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, another save game here. As you see, it's pretty easy to just like switch. Right. I in mean, that first game they'd only been playing for one day. We saw this yeah, one's exactly. 86 days. Yeah. This is a much more advanced party. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so these are actually all the developers of the game I've done a party with here. Uh, so now we're in Sunset Castle. This is the main capital of the pen and paper world. Uh, you can see there's uh, another option available here, the blacksmith. Uh, it's a place where you can update, uh, upgrade like all your equipment and stuff. Right. You can upgrade the blacksmith as well. Makes him uh, uh, craft things faster and it gets a higher success rate. So, uh, But here's another new feature we got, uh, the tavern. Uh, so this is a place to 
sort of deposit uh, some of your heroes if you, uh, add, if you like, want to swap out party yeah, members. Yeah, and then you can like try out different builds and stuff. Since we have like a bunch of unlockable characters and classes in the game, this is an easy way to sort of when you I immediately unlock something new, you might want to add that. Like, oh, a necromancer, I want that. Then you can just like deposit your paladin, bring in the necromancer instead, and just try that out. Cool. That's nice because that's something, again, that you said on the mobile version. You were kind of locked into a party once you started. Yeah, exactly. So this is just another one of those, like, try to listen to what people seem to be wanting for the game and doing something like that. Uh, and now I'm going to go to the dungeon to show you that as well. So dungeons are basically a location on the map that's sort of like an instance where you go into the dungeon with your group and you have to sort of gear up to do this because once you're in... Uh, you can't go out or you can't rest or anything without having to like reset the dungeon and start all over again. Sure. So in a dungeon you have like this uh, sort of in dungeon map uh, where the ultimate goal is to defeat uh -huh. the boss in the boss room. But he's locked in there so you have to find a key first which of is course. hidden somewhere around the dungeon. So we gotta go to these random encounters first and yes, see what happens. Exactly. Oh, that's pretty good. I got a health boost. Didn't need it but it's better than traps and <laughs> other kind of stuff I can find in here. Uh, so check out the next one. There we go. Battle. Right. Battle. Oof. Uh, yes, Elder Samurai. N yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> I, that's this is an example of the way that you guys kind of uh, poke fun at kind of popular culture references. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff like this. Uh, like the developer said, they wanna like do keep a lot of these like old school references, the pixel art, the chiptune uh, music in the game and all of that like in conjunction with the pen and paper experience to sort of create that nostalgic feeling uh, that most of us have as kids, you know. Yeah. Uh, so let's see, I, I might not actually make this since uh, the dungeons are pretty, pretty difficult. Uh, yeah. Another example of that, people uh, already l loved the game, it seems, but a lot of them are sort of feeling that they would like it to be a bit more difficult. They want more of a challenge uh, playing the game. Oh, you're so doing okay. Yeah, so far I mean pretty good. But this is like one room. If I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And since uh, I didn't actually gear up, so I don't think I have any potions with me, so uh, it might be a little difficult. Jesus. Well, say if you fail, it's because of of the demo purposes. Not yeah, because, yeah, absolutely. Not because no, you're no, bad. I'm not even focusing on the game right now, so that's pretty much. I don't. I yeah, we're no just trying to I'm show doing. all of the various parts of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, this is a great example of something to do when you build up a party. Like, this is the easiest dungeon. The other dungeons are much harder. So, it's a good way to sort of find a goal. Like, I want to complete that dungeon because killing the boss with. Uh, like reward you with a bunch of treasures and experience. Right. There's also a chance you might find a secret merchant in the dungeon uh, that it, like carries with them like items. very epic items. Yeah, yeah, but they're really expensive, so you have to make sure you have like a proper amount of gold before going in there, because you don't want to miss out if he actually appears. You want to be able to buy something. Uh, so we have like tons of other features uh, planned for the game, but we wanna sort of save some of it still and we want to see what people's reactions are and what they seem to be wanting more of. Uh, and uh, Even after release, we're probably going to be supporting this game for a little while. But summer, that's sometime this summer is sometime when people summer. finally begin their hands on yes. it. Cool. Well, that's kind of a large overview of Knights and Pen and Paper, the plus one edition. Yes. Uh, for a lot more on Knights and Pen and Paper in the coming months, you can go to IGN.